Hey everyone, Micah here with Electrek, and today we're reviewing the Harley-Davidson Livewire electric motorcycle. Right off the bat, I can tell you two things. One, it's overpriced, and two, it's amazing. When it comes to the Harley-Davidson Livewire, it seems all everyone wants to talk about is the price. And I get it, it's expensive. $30,000 expensive. And that's a lot of money. Too much money, if you ask me. But if you'll humor me with just a couple minutes of your time, I'd like to try and look past that price to actually take a fair look at the bike and judge it not on its price tag, but on its performance. Because let's get real, you're probably not going to buy this motorcycle. I'm probably not going to buy this motorcycle. But we can still appreciate that Harley-Davidson actually did a really great job with this bike, especially considering it was their first ever electric motorcycle. Alright, so let's dive in. First of all, the Harley-Davidson Livewire has some serious power. We're talking 78 kilowatts or 105 horsepower. That's enough for a 0 to 60 time of 3 seconds. And listen to that sound. That liquid-cooled motor and 90 degree bevel gear transmission combine to create a unique sound that is unlike any other electric motorcycle I've ridden. Harley found an interesting compromise here, creating a unique sound for the bike that adds to the riding experience instead of detracting from it. The Livewire can do 110 miles per hour or 177 kilometers per hour. Not that most people need to go that fast though, but the power is there and it pulls strong the whole way. In fact, last summer I had the chance to test the Livewire on the Brooklyn Formula E racetrack. There I was able to get it up into the 80s, and I didn't feel any noticeable power drop from 0 to 80 miles an hour. It had a nice linear pull the entire way. And the Livewire also has a host of electronic rider aids that help make that 78 kilowatts of power controllable on just two wheels. The bike includes a sophisticated 6-axis Bosch IMU that offers state-of-the-art traction control, anti-wheelie and anti-stoppy control, ABS cornering bank angle logic, and more. Basically, the bike makes it easy to handle that kind of power without getting yourself into trouble, creating a nice, smooth, and comfortable riding experience, whether you want to push it hard or just take it easy on a cruise. On the ride comfort side of things, Harley splurged with quality suspension components, like a fully adjustable, high-end, show us separate function big piston fork, and the balance-free rear cushion light shock. Plus, Harley included Brembo monoblock brakes to make sure the bike has as much stop as it has go. And again, do these higher-end parts make this bike worth $30,000? Probably not, but I'd be lying if I said the Livewire didn't offer a more premium experience than other electric motorcycles on the road. Even simple things like the Livewire's keyless operation and auto-canceling turn signals are really nice features that sound simple, but they make a big difference when you're struggling to find your keys in your pocket while wearing motorcycle gloves, or when you're trying to focus on a tricky intersection and don't want to be worrying about if you left your blinker on. All of the details just feel like the company put time and care into the design. The body panel gaps are even, the lights and reflectors have that nice smooth glossy look instead of the glued on compliance look, and I don't even mind the fake gas tank with the fake filler cap that hides the charge port, complete with CCS level 3 DC fast charging port. Sure, the design here is inspired by gas bikes, but it actually looks good. It doesn't look like it was forced or too on the nose. I think Harley did a good job of paying tribute to their design legacy while still charting a new path with a new kind of motorcycle. And I'll give them credit for not going over the top and trying to force gas bike styling on us. They were subtle, and I like it. Even the bike's heartbeat is kind of a cool feature that was inspired by gas bikes. It's a really weird feature to describe, but I'll do my best here. The bike has this heartbeat that feels like a bit of a pulse that runs through it while it's on but idling. With electric motorcycles, they sound the same whether they're on or off, you can't hear anything, and new riders can forget that they're actually on, which can be dangerous if someone accidentally blipped the throttle while getting ready to ride. So to create a subtle reminder that the bike is actually running, Harley built in what they call the heartbeat, which sends this slight pulsing sensation that you feel in your thighs and in the handlebars. You can turn it off if you don't like it, but I actually kind of like it. You get the slight rumble feeling of something operating beneath you, but without the noise of exhaust pipes. 
It's just one more sensory input that meshes the rider and the bike together, and I think it's a neat idea that's inspired by gas bikes, but implemented in a new electric motorcycle kind of way. So as you can probably tell by now, I'm pretty positive about the live wire. It's not perfect, of course, and the biggest downside is probably the range, which is limited to 146 miles of city range, or 95 miles of mixed highway and city range. In my experience, I was riding all over Los Angeles and never once had range anxiety. I just didn't do more than 100 miles in a day, and so it was not an issue for me. And of course you'll hear people riding the live wire off and claiming its range makes it a non-starter, but that's just nonsense to me, and here's why. Most people do not ride 100 miles in a day. For those that do, the answer is simple. Maybe don't buy this bike. But for anyone with a typical 40 or 50 mile commute or less, which, spoiler alert, is the vast majority of the world, a bike with this kind of range is more than enough. From interstate riding to mountain highways to city cruising, I had an amazing time on the live wire and I never once felt like I wouldn't have enough charge. And with level 3 DC fast charging, there's always the option to go on longer trips with planned charge stops, especially as fast charging stations become more prominent in the years to come. So to wrap this up, is the live wire perfect? No, of course not. But is it a premium electric motorcycle that is better quality than the competition? Objectively, yes. It's got higher quality components, more premium features, and a nationwide dealer and service network. The problem is that still won't make the bike seem worth $30,000 to most people. And to me, that's okay. The Livewire is a rich person's bike for now. That's how these things go. The first Teslas had six-figure price tags, but the rich early adopters who bought them helped Tesla produce moderately priced cars today. And as long as Harley-Davidson can hang in there, they've got another four electric models planned for the next two years, which could see the prices drop into the affordable range for many more riders. And that's what excites me most about the Livewire. Not what it does today, but what it could mean for tomorrow. Thanks for watching everyone. We hope you enjoyed that review of the Harley-Davidson Livewire electric motorcycle. If you did, why don't you give this video a thumbs up? And don't forget to subscribe so you can check out all of Electrek's electric vehicle videos. We'll see you here next time.